Hey, this is Jared and you're watching Backroad Exploration and today I am so excited to begin the process of turning this luxury grocery getter into the off-road and overland vehicle that it has always wanted to be. Now, I'm a regular guy with a regular budget and so this is going to be a long process. It's not all happening overnight. I'm just starting with the needs and then I'll start moving to the wants later this year. Now, if you followed my channel along, you know I've been exploring all over Utah in my Jeep over the past few years. When I decided to change platforms and move to this vehicle, I knew that it was not going to be as capable as the Jeep, especially in its current stock form. But the Jeep was able to do more things than I was really wanting it to do, and this is gonna add extra space, some extra luxury, and give me the ability to kind of do my own build from the bottom up. Now, I'm gonna be starting with the tires. The wheels and tires that come on the Lexus GX460 stock are just totally for street and city driving only. It's an 18 inch rim, which just doesn't give you enough tread for protection, and it comes with street tires. I've tested them in the snow and just over, things like that over the past little bit, and they're absolutely terrible. It definitely needs a good all-terrain. I'm gonna be adding an Old Man Emu three inch lift from the guys over at Cruiser Outfitters. Now, if you know anything about them, they know their Land Cruisers. And I'm really excited. I'll be picking up the lift tomorrow morning and having it installed. And then later on in the week, the tires and wheels will be going on. That's gonna be giving me the ground clearance that I need to be able to go on the adventures that I want. If you followed my channel for a long time, you know that my brother Mike often comes with me on my adventures, and he, when doing that, he is in his stock forerunner, and there are a lot of instances in which he needs more ground clearance. And so, because this platform is very similar, I know I'm gonna need more. Even though I won't need as much as I had in the Jeep, I definitely need more than this has in its stock configuration. So that's kind of the first part of this build. We're doing a lift, we're doing tires and wheels, and eventually I'll be doing the bumper chop that people do to these GX460s to just give yourself a lot more front ground clearance. Now for tire choice, I'm going again with the Falcon Wild Peak AT3Ws for two main reasons. First of all, I've been running them for 18 months on the Jeep and I absolutely love them. They're super capable, have great traction, and they have held up to a ton of abuse. The second reason that I'm going with the Falcon Wild Peaks is that they're one of the few tires that you can do in a 255-80 R17 configuration. Essentially, that's a 33-inch tire. It's a tall skinny. I wanted that for a few reasons. One, tall skinnies, in my opinion, are your best off-road capable tire unless you're doing tons and tons of sand driving, which I'm not doing. So they're gonna give me nice, nice narrow profile, great traction. They're not gonna be jutting out a bunch out the side and spitting mud everywhere all over the vehicle like I had happening all the time with the Jeep, but they're gonna give me really good ground clearance, really good traction, and turn this GX into the off-roader that I want it to be, which is to be able to go just about anywhere on the trails in Utah. So let's get started. The first goal that I have to accomplish behind the build with the GX is just better ground clearance and better traction. I need to get off of the ground so that I have the ability to take on mild to moderate trails. So wheels, tires, and a lift kit are gonna make it so that I can pretty much go as many places as I want to in that mild to moderate range. And then I can get back out on my adventures um, I did end up selling the Jeep. The plan was maybe at first to sell it, then we decided we were gonna keep it. And as I wasn't having any luck selling it, and I just loved the Jeep. Anyways, I had a guy contact me and say, hey, um, I'm interested, let me come. He came that day. It was filthy from my last adventure. I hadn't even cleaned it up or anything yet. Had a new crack in the windshield from my latest adventure. And all said and done, uh, he bought it right then. So Jeep's gone, GX is the primary vehicle now, lots of adventures to tackle, but I'm excited to do these first additions to this so that we're ready for those adventures. Hard to see it, but the GX is back there. Lauren and I are heading up to Cruiser Outfitters right now to grab the lift kit, and then we'll be headed over to Impulse Off-Road for the install. Well, I'm back in the garage. I just got home from getting the tires and wheels mounted on the GX, and it has totally transformed 
this vehicle from looking like a grocery getter luxury SUV into a very capable off-roader. I'm going to show off how much clearance I gained. I measured before and I'm going to be measuring after so you can see what that did. But essentially, I've got a three inch old man emu lift on here. I have 255 ADR17 tires mounted onto TRD Pro off-road wheels. It looks really good. One of the reasons that I chose this wheel setup is that it has minimal rubbing. The thing about these GXs is they are luxury SUVs. There's not a ton of room in that wheel well, so putting bigger tires runs into problems. When guys step up to like 35s and things like that, you got to do a lot of cutting and moving around. I didn't want to do that. A 33 is very capable for the type of off-roading that I want to do in this but there is a little bit of rubbing at full lock on turns. So the nice thing is, is all it's gonna take is a little bit of massaging with the heat gun. So I'm gonna bust that out, kind of do a little bit of pushing on that inner, that inner um, fender wheel well. Should be easy to make it so that we can go full lock in both directions with no problems. So you can see the tolerance right here, really tight. In fact, it's actually just hitting this, which I believe is just a rubber mud guard. So if I take this off, it might actually solve it. Um, maybe I'll have to still push in a little bit. We'll see, but overall really nothing there. And then it just barely touches on this back piece. So I think if I just get that a little bit hot right there, push it in, it'll be good to go. Okay, come back, go passenger again. Not all the way, stop there. Go back, driver a little more. Right there, it just barely skims. So if I just, yeah, that's gonna be easy. Well, I think I'm done making them fit. I basically just use this pry bar and the heat gun, um, just get it nice and warm and then use the pry bar to just kind of push it where I want it to be, leave it there for a, you know, 30 seconds or a minute afterwards to kind of hold it in place. And that's how you fit 255, 80, 17Rs on a GX460 with a small lift. So I've got a three inch lift. Um, now what I wanna do is I wanna check clearance and just see how much extra height between the tires and the lift I have versus what I had before. So I'll check that out. The first thing that I wanted to do was to measure from the ground to the lowest body point on the vehicle. And as you can see, I have an increase of three inches, which makes sense because these tires are three inches larger than the factory OEM tires. Then I moved to measure from the ground to the top of the wheel wells. This should help account for the increase in tire size as well as the lift kit. Essentially after measuring all four sides, I landed anywhere between four and a half to five inches, which with three inch increase in tires and a three inch lift lands about where you would expect it to with the weight of the vehicle. I've got the lift and the tires on the GX and man, it looks so good. I'm really excited to get this out off road. I was feeling really nervous just with those street tires on there and basically low profile, but with the lift and the tires, this is going to make it capable of handling a lot of mild to moderate trails. And over the next few months, I'm going to be adding on to this build. If you enjoyed this video and you want to watch more of the build or you want to follow me on my adventures, please like and subscribe and you can follow me on the day to day at Backroad Exploration. Thanks so much for watching.